All right, you know what it is. Unique Mecca Audio, man. I'm here. I'm back. You know what I mean? Everybody been telling me they want to hear the prison story, so I'm going to give you another prison story, man. I'm going to tell you. We're going to talk about racism. We're going to talk about racism in the prison and geographical locations and things like that, meaning that you in whatever car you in by based on the color of your skin, you know, your religion, you know, um, where you from, you know what I mean? Things like that. So I'm going to tell you one about, um, about the white guys. You know what I mean? Um, I'm in ADX and, uh, you know, Supermax, that's where they got El Chapo at. You know what I mean? So I'm in ADX and they got this white dude in there named, um, I'm going to give him a name. You know what I mean? I don't even want to say his name, but I'm going to give him a name. We got this white dude in there named Terror. You understand what I'm saying? So it's a young white dude. He only about 20 years old, but he came to ADX because he stabbed some police in another joint or something. He winds up in there. Young white boy, you know what I mean? He was good people, you know what I mean? No disrespect to me saying white boy and all that, but, you know, he was a young white boy, right? And uh, he up in the joint, and he gets in there around, you know, Barry Mill, the one they call America's most toughest criminal, because, you know what I mean? Look up Barry Mills. I'm giving you some names. I'll do a video on him, speaking about him later, but this is not about him, but he's the big homie. You know what I mean? For the um, white boys and they, you know, and they gangs and stuff like that. The skinheads, the dirty white boys, the Aryan Brotherhood. He's like the big kahuna. You know what I mean? He's the one they made the Hannibal Lecter movie over where they had to put a, you know, build a jail within the jail form. And that's how they came up with the movie Hannibal Lecter where he was sitting in the joint. But this white boy, uh, Terror. Terror up in the joint. You know what I mean? And he gets around Barry Mills and, you know, Vern and all the other old racist white dudes that, you know, that run their thing. Now, I talked to, you know, Barry Mills myself and, um, you know, Vern and, you know, a number of the racist white dudes. And, you know, nobody couldn't understand why I was talking to them, but I wanted to know what made them think the way they think. You understand what I'm saying? And basically the way they broke it down to me, like, you know, why they racist? But the way they broke it down to me is that it's not that they racist. They have white pride the same way we have black pride, Jamaican pride, African pride, Dominican pride, Puerto Rican pride, Cuban pride. They say they got white pride. And that's what Donald Trump tapped into with the, um, with the, um, with the mega movement. You know what I mean? Make America great again. Make America white again. You know what I mean? So that's how they broke it down. But anyway, so we up in ADX, we chilling. We, I, you know, we got all types of people up there, man. You know what I mean? We got, like I said, my man Juan Ramon Mata up there. You know what I mean? We got everybody up there. So we do what we do. So um, we do our time. We leave. I go to Allen Wood. That's where I ran into Guy Fisher and William Underwood and Big C and Scooter. You understand what I'm saying? And, you know, and all the other big dudes, you know what I mean? That was in the system. I leave ADX after a little five years. And, you know, this is in 99. So I'm back over there now in May 99. And then, you know, I go there. I start doing my thing. Yeah, not to brag. Let's get all that straight. I'm selling drugs again. You know what I mean? I'm doing what I do in the prison. You know what I mean? SIS couldn't catch me. That's what they call the special investigation service in the prison. So that's the police force, the detective force within the prison. And the COs are just the officers. So SIS trying to catch me and all that. They couldn't catch me. I'm going to tell you about a little dude named Feeney that was an animal. But, uh, you know, he was the head SIS, the best that I met at, with the SIS. Him and another dude named Sturgill. I'll get into them later in another video. But anyway, some over there, they couldn't catch me. So they send me um, out to Lompoc. You know what I mean? I get out to Lompoc, California. And when I get out to Lompoc, California, now this story's kind of wild, right? But it's a true story, man. Everybody was out there know. I'm just changing a couple of names when I get into the incident so that, you know what I mean? Not to incriminate anybody, don't want to be incriminated, don't want to be told about on YouTube. But anyway, so we get out there and you got this uh, big black dude, you know what I mean? He huge, the nigga chest way out here, you know what I mean? I mean, God damn, this nigga look like a tank, you know what I mean? So he's sitting there, but he was gay, you understand what I'm saying? So, but he didn't like black guys. He only liked white guys. You understand what I'm saying? His thing was taking advantage of a white guy because he'd been down at the time like 20 years when I only had 10 in. So he'd been down like 20 years. And his thing is that he done been down so long that he want to punish, you know, white boys for everything that the white man and the justice system did to him. So with this white boy come there, tall, skinny white boy, called himself Princess Leah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So he come there. And uh, the big black dude, we're going to call him Tank. Big Tank sitting there, chest sitting out, looked like a little Tonka toy, right? Like, the, you know, I mean, this dude looked like the Hulk, you know? But older dude, too, you know? Ain't had no teeth in the front of his mouth and all that. But Big um, big Tank rolls up on, you know, the, the white dude, you know what I mean? And he tells the white dude, 
talking about uh, Princess Leah, the homosexual. He tells him, yo, four o'clock, you be in the bath, the library um, bathroom, you know what I mean? Or you going up top. Up top mean that you got to check in and go to the hole. So he tells the white boy, you got to meet him in the bathroom. So now I get caught up for something else. I'm in the shoe at the time, right? So I wasn't out there when this happened on the compound. But they, um, after four o'clock count, I see this white boy come in and, you know, I got to bring him they, they blankets and stuff because I'm the orderly in there and make sure they got the soap and toilet paper and the cell clean and all that old crap. So I'm up in the joint. They bring the white boy up in there. So somebody told me to ask the white boy why was he up there. You know what I mean? I guess somebody known from the compound or whatever. So they asked him why he up there. He say that he up there because some big black dude named Tank rolled up on him and told him be in the bathroom at four o'clock count or else go up top. And he said, well, I'm here, I'm up top. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not gonna wrestle with this big black dude. I'm not even gonna do nothing with this big black dude. So he come up there, but come to find out he was lying. So he comes up there and uh, while he up there, the black dude come back there, he bring him some cigarettes and he trying to talk him and to come back on the pound and the white dude tell him, man, the white guys are gonna kill me if I deal with a black dude outside the race with the homosexuality, this and that. And the black dude like, man, ain't nobody gonna mess with me. I'm big tank. Da, 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 da. You understand what I'm saying? So he talks the white boy into going back on the compound. White boy goes on the compound and, you know, black dude tank lived up to his word. None of the white boys said nothing to him. You know what I mean? This went on for about a couple of weeks and then here comes a bus come in. Bus come in and they send in these two younger white dudes. One of them is, guess who? Terror. You know what I mean? So Terror comes to the compound and he finds out what's going on that, you know, the white dude is having sex with the black dude. So he telling, uh, Terror telling the other white guys that, yo, this is unacceptable. You understand what I'm saying? We got to get him off the yard or we got to kill him or we got to do something. You understand? But the other uh, white dudes didn't want to go to war with the uh, black dude, Terror because the black dude terrorists from a big state that his car was big in the prison. So they definitely didn't want to go to toe with these big crazy black dudes, you know? They go to war with each other quick, but they wasn't trying to cross race and beef with the black dudes. So while we out in the joint, he tell them that uh, the, the, the dude terror tell them they got to go. You understand what I'm saying? That, you know, either they go, either the white dude go, they get rid of the white dude, or he going to start stabbing them up. So... They get scared, they check the white dude in, the white dude get, go and go up top, it's almost a big old war and all this, so everything going on. And everything the white dude's doing, Terror comes there and he's pushing the agenda what he learned from Barry Mills and them and Vernon them from up there in ADX. You know how the racist white boys are supposed to run their joint with white pride. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know what I mean? He kept pushing it and pushing it and pushing it and he had them stabbing each other for any little violation. I'm talking about if a white dude sitting at the table with a black dude, they tell him you got to stab him. He got to go because he ain't supposed to mix with no niggas. Da, da, da. You know what I mean? If a white dude smoking a, 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 a joint behind a black dude, he got to get stabbed because you ain't allowed to do no mixing with no black dudes. The only thing you're allowed to do is buy drugs from a black dude, but you ain't allowed to socially get high and do none of that with the white, uh, black dudes and the Spanish dudes because the Spanish dudes run the same way too that they don't mix with the blacks. The blacks, first of all, in prison, they look at us like we low life. You know what I mean? The Spanish and whites, get, they get along, they even team up against the blacks, but nobody mess with the blacks in there. You know what I mean? But then now, you got dudes sitting there and he done ran them, you know, ran all them off the compound and he got them stabbing each other and all this. So they get scared to death of them. So they trick them. You know what I mean? What they do is they find them and they tell them that they got some dope for them, they, you know, and some wine and they're having a party in the cell. They go in the cell, they get him good and drunk and high and all that. And he gets good and drunk. And then while he's sitting there, then here comes this dude, he pulls out the knife and they winds up stabbing old terror in the cell like 32 times and murder him in the cell. Young boy, he was about 26 at the time. You know what I mean? But he was pushing the agenda that they didn't want to push and they were so scared of him that they had to get him high and drunk in order to kill him. You understand what I'm saying? But I say that to let y'all know that ain't nothing glamorous about prison. Youngins, don't try and go to prison because you got to sit there and mix with the, you know what I mean, with the politics of what's going on in the prison. It ain't nothing nice. You understand? I mean, nothing nice in the prison, man. So they killed old Terror because he was pushing the line and was preventing them from, you know, you know, violating the codes that, you know, the big boys, you know, uh, um, set in place for how they supposed to do their bid and stay away from the minority black race. You know what I mean? So now he did. So that's one, you know, but I'm gonna give you another one just to put it in. So now another time I'm in Atwater, make this a little longer. I'm in Atwater 
and I get off the bus with 33 people. 33 people get off the bus, everybody crying that they want to get off. You understand what I'm saying? And, you know, I'm going to save that for another one, man. You know what I mean? I'm going to save that for another one. But now nah, I'm going to get it to you real quick. All right. Yo, so look. So we all get off the bus. This white boy come out, blonde hair, blue eyes, and all that. He gets off the bus and long hair down his back. He was from, like, West Virginia. Pure corn-fed white boy. You know what I mean? Not a tattoo on him. You know what I mean? So now, you know, when we get off the bus, um... I see him about, about 30 days later. Within 30 days, like I said, we came with 33. Out of 33 people that came, was only seven of us left. You know what I mean? The, 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 the rest of them, the other 28, you know what I mean? Or whatever it was, uh, they all got stabbed up and ran off the pound for either being hot, violating the code, mixing with a different race, mixing with a homosexual, stealing, just whatever you're doing. All of them got ran off the pound for something within 30 days. So the white boy's still there. He's the one I thought wasn't going to make it. But then now... A week later, I'm standing in the line. Uh, no, I'm standing out by the yard, you know, by the um, by the uh, uh, workout area I used to work out. And this white boy walk up to me and he started talking to me. And I might pay him no mind. I'm just working out. So when I stop and drink some water and I look up and I said, like, yo, what's up? And he's like, oh, you don't, you don't remember me? I said, nah. He said, man, I came here on the bus with you. I just want to tell you we the last two left. <laughs> you know what I mean? out of the 33 that came, you know? And I'm looking at him and I'm looking spaced out. But the reason why I'm looking at, looking at him spaced out is because now he got a bald head, he got a SWAT stick on his head, you know what I mean? He got skulls and daggers and spider webs on his face and you know what I mean? He got all these tattoos on his face and he looked like something that been in, in the prison system his whole life. But it's the same white boy that was corn fed, just came from West Virginia that got there. So I'm looking like, what the, you know what I mean? So now all I could think of is when he go home to his family and he walks in that house and they see all these tattoos on his face when he came in here, young, you know, young man, you know what I mean? A young, pure cut, you know, white dude. You know what I mean? So that's all I could think about. I said, yo, what is going to happen when you go home with all them tattoos on your face? He said, man, I'm just going to tell my family I had to survive. I said, what you mean you had to survive? He said, man, only way to get in is that I had to get initiated and get all these tattoos and all that so I could look like them and boop, boop, boop. And, you know, that's why, you know, I had to get these tattoos. And this dude looked like something out of one of the magazines with tattoos everywhere on his face and head, bald head, and that long blonde hair down his back. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm like, God damn, like, yeah, man, it's hard on a white guy in here. You know what I mean? He said, you don't have it that hard because you who you are. You know what I mean? I said, yeah, but I never thought of it that way. But God damn, nigga, tattoos on your face to go back to West Virginia? And he said, man, I know I think about that every night. But right now, I just got to think about waking up every morning while I'm in here. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I'm going to get more in depth with, with this, these stories later. But I just want to hit you with that one, man. I mean, it's all good. Let me go. Let me tap out. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, the like button, share the video, tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend that crime is not worth it because if not, you can wind up in jail like any one of those two dudes. All right, out. Cheers, 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 Fresh out the can of 26, yeah. he back on the strip, uh -huh. getting back in the mix, yeah. what he mentions a gift, Trust. you stand up 10 toes down and I suggest you pay attention to this, Real. take a little gully posse and put it in home, uh -huh. he cut from the bottom, Back. came up from the bottom, Back. dropped the book, you should go and get it, go an Instagram it. page and a YouTube, you could go and visit, yeah. then you could consider yourself LinkedIn, Real. sit front row and get juice from a kingpin, uh -huh. how he went through it so you ain't gotta go do it, uh -huh. did not pay attention would be stupid, talking about a man that probably put your grandfather on Probably the reason that him and your grams got along A man that generated millions on the block Did his time, never squilling to the cops Make an audio
two G's in the ninth. Yeah. Drop top beamer so shine. Yeah. I let shorty go, she was wine. Treat her like my past, she behind me. Spin a couple bands on the dapper den. You be back again, getting green like a Packers fan. No cap, this a raw enough town. Baby horn up town, Dominican bust down. Now we on the positive. You we got a lot to give. Now you trying to stop the kids from being inoperative. So take heed, homie Linda Ed. He started in uptown, he gon' finish dead. But now it ain't about selling drugs, buying cars. It's about buying property to make the community yard. So we can give back to the youth them. Cause they the truth them. And bless up to all the rude men. Yeah.